It's week two of the championship meet here at Gulfstream Park. December 7th through the 10th. It was a really good week. Let's take a look back and see how the days went. Racing got started Wednesday, December the 6th at Gulfstream, and in the fifth race it was a non-winners of three lifetime. As I wrote in my analysis, there are a lot of horses that probably be much better bets, but boy, I really did not like the favorite, Eight Lemon Royal, who was two for 32. Yikes. And five of the last seven races he'd been beaten as the favorite. So I was looking for an upset and I found number three, Mr. Monk. Mr. Monk's trainer was an amazing 50% going turf to dirt with an ROI of $3.01 for every $2 bet. He was my pick as he turned for home. Luis Saez and Lemon Royal have the lead. Cyber Josh has not gone away. Mr. Monk into the clear and coming on. Cotton Colors wants to be into the clear and tries to muscle home now with an eighth of a mile to go. Mr. Monk strides to the lead. Cotton Colors shakes free down the center. And he's big boy with pear pear tie. But Mr. Monk in his dirt debut will kick clear to win it. Mr. Monk and Luca Panici by a length and a half. Sec and I had my first winner on the day. In the sixth race, it was a maiden claimer, and there had been a lot of upsets on the turf so far through the first several days of racing. I like number nine, Run Blondie Run, who was five to one, and I thought would be a good price for Bill Mott and John Velasquez. As they hit the far turn, Johnny V made his move on the longtime leader, and I've seen enough races to know when there's trouble. Kim was watching with me, and I said, are we not gonna get to this 90 to one front runner? They still haven't colored two dishes. On the outside and run, Blondie run one more time. Late run from Sunfest up the inside. Dudicious trying to hang on. Dudicious won it. No, no, $182 for a $2 bet. Wow. <laughs> on Thursday, December the 7th, I had plays at both the fairgrounds and at Gulfstream. The third at Gulfstream was a claiming event going six furlongs and either you're with Todd Fletcher or you're not. Here he was dropping a horse down into the claiming ranks and that's pretty unusual for him, but he has good numbers with that. I thought it was a good move as they were going to make money on the deal. And dial one, number seven, was my top pick. Joe Joe Spencer and a late run from HBG Denny. But inside that final furlong, the class of dial one is kicking in, and he's kicking away. Dial one in front, and he won it easily in the end. He won it by four lengths. Rogue Page. In the ninth, it was a second level allowance, and it was my best bet of the day. Number two, eight town. He'd run strong back-to-back -back efforts for Brian Lynch this summer at Saratoga and had been training out west at Del Mar during the Breeders' Cup meet. He just looked much the best in here. I went prime time on number two, Three eight town. to go, eight town pulls out a little bit more and leads three parts of a length, a bounding legacy. Dead game and right with him second, three back to Saucy Don third. Eight town on the inside, a bounding legacy one more time on the outside, but eight town has the lead and eight town game us of all to win it. A At the fairgrounds in the third race, claiming event going a two-turn mile, I like Chantel Sutherland, who's riding in New Orleans for the first time, to win the race with number seven, Stately Defense. She doesn't win many races, but today it looked like one of her best chances. She went right to the front. Seconds. Stately Defense spins them in into the short stretch. It's Stately Defense, who's out in front. On the outside is Ultra Arumba, looking for a late gain now by Corey Battery. And at the inside is Miss Boronet, who's staying on as well. These three for the final 16th. Stately Defense, Miss Boronet, dead game. Stately Defense holds Miss Boronet and Ultra Arumba. That way, past the first line. Uh, that's right, had that one doubled the bet. And in my last bet of the day, in the slop, it was a fifth race, it was a claiming event. Going six furlongs, I like number three, Hot Foot. Now, there are class drops and then there are class drops. This guy, running for a cheap claiming tag today, had last been seen setting the pace in the grade two Louisiana Derby. Oh my, he either wins here or he never wins. Came rolling late. Brave Benny continues to hold on to this lead as Hot Foot now descends on Brave Benny with a 16 to go. Bullhart is in third. Warletter's a late bid. Here's Hotfoot, who's up to the front for Adam Mosquitza, and Edge is clear co close to the finish. It's Hotfoot on top. Great Benny. And I 
had my second winter at the fairgrounds. Friday, December the 8th was a very unusual day. While I was watching the races on Thursday, they talked about they were bringing back Beat the Experts. You have to pick the winners of all 10 races. And I'd handicapped the card for Friday, and I thought, you know what? <clears throat> Why not? In the opener, I didn't bet the race, but I like number nine, Alaskan Prince. It's the Prince. front now on the outside, and Alaskan Prince right alongside. And now Alaskan Prince powers to the lead. Alaskan Prince wins. Oh, that's one win. In the second race, it was a non-winners of two, and I like Todd Pletcher's Alcor. A really bad bet because he'd be a short price and he's dropping down, but you're either with Pletcher or you're against. I doubled the bet and they're on at the Alcor. Top of the stretch after three quarters and 111 flat. Here's three star stone to take a shot at Alcor. Alcor has the lead. Three star stone up into second. Gap of two to sail the seas third. Alcor has something in the tank here. And Alcor fights on, and Alcor will win it. That's two for two. In the third race, I like number nine, Francisco Appeal. No, didn't win. In the fourth race, there was a maiden claimer for two-year-olds going a one-turn mile. And again, there was a Todd Fletcher in here. Looked to be the likely favorite, but this guy, I thought he looked much the best. Number three, Tito Chip. And I tripled the bet on him. He was tons Musical of heart tackled by Transistor. Tito Chip continues to grind away. Now he actually begins to pick up his feet. He's in the clear and coming on after three quarters in 111 and one. Tito Chip is on the attack. Tito Chip straightened up for the drive by Luis Saez and he runs by the leader. Battles on for second between Transistor and Musical Heart, but one to five is Tito Chip and he's moving away. Tito Chip in front. Transistor second, Musical Heart third. So now I've got three out of four wins heading into the fifth race. <clears throat> the fifth race was a maiden claimer for two-year-olds, and yes, there was a Todd Pletcher. And as I say several times, either you're with Pletcher or you're against. And as soon as you start to guess, you're going to end up missing a really nice one, especially on the turf. I liked his first time starter number eight, Tis Now Times Two. He was six to one on the program. He went off at a much better price than that. In second. Acolyte waits for racing room. Mononga keeps him bracketed in. Running on a bit is New Atlas. The moment is now looks for racing room for Johnny V. On the far outside and cool mover in there at the top of the stretch. Tis now times two has the lead. The moment is now trying to duck to the inside and finish up. And he's doing just that with an eighth of a mile to go. The moment is now seizes the moment and puts ahead in front. Right back at him. Tis now times two. Tis now times two. Back up and in front a half a length. Oh yeah, I had the 2940 long shot, and that's four out of five on the day. The sixth race was a claiming event. I like number one, Grand Nene. He did not win. In the seventh race, I did not have a bet, but for purposes of the contest, I bet number two, Glorious Moment. 16th to go, Glorious Moment is all heart, and battles back to take the lead. Beauty of a day up into second, but time has run out. Glorious Moment. Well, that's another win, five out of seven. In the eighth race, it was my last bet of the day. We were on the turf with two-year-old maidens. No, there wasn't a Todd Pletcher, but Christophe Clement had number five, Fast Boat, who the Daily Racing Forums, Mike Welsh made his bet of the day. I doubled the bet on number fast five, boat. Fast Boat. Comes off cover to try to rally, four wide and net fiend, three back to Sensational Sam, and they're out the top of the stretch. Here's Fast Boat in the center of the race course to take on the leader, and that leader was solid, but it's now Fast Boat. Fast Boat, very confidently ridden by Tyler Gaffleone, and look at him run away. Fast Boat, very sharp in victory. Fast Boat never really asked for his best, and he won it by five. Oh, yeah, another winner. I didn't have bets in the ninth and the tenth. For the contest in the ninth, I like number four, Bold Mr. Baker and from Boyd. the outside, then Baba Toby in Classic Cotton. But Todd Pletcher remains in the zone. Here's another one for him. Here's Bold Envoy to win it. Another winner. And in the finale, I like number seven, Furiosa. Marciano trying to hold off Furiosa with a furious finish on the outside. Furiosa going away. Oh, eight 
out of 10 on the day. And the expert, Acacia, she only had three. Eligible for the polo shirt. Woo, what a good day.